So I got a request to do a tutorial about separating the inside from the outside on certain objects. So for example, if we're looking at this guy here and we have his hood here, I'm just going to zoom in. If we wanted to separate the inside from the outside here using polygroups, how do we actually set that up? So before we actually do that, I'm going to show you the main functionality of this. We have one object here, which is smooth on one side and very blocky on the other. And if we go down to the polygroups menu and your tool menu, or polygroups roll up rather in your tool menu, you can see that we have a group by normals button. So this has an angle threshold um, and it has a, a different algorithm button. So anytime you see this in ZBrush, if you click it, you get an open circle or a closed circle. One tends to be more aggressive than the other. It's just two different algorithms. And that's pretty much it. So by default, this is the one that it's going to be on. Um, it's going to set to 45 degrees. And it's basically saying, as you meet an angle, have a polygroup, and then if there's a more of a 40, more than a 45 degree angle change, we'll then give it a different polygroup. So when we hit group by normals, that's what's gonna happen. The difference between here and here is more than 45 degrees, whereas the difference between here and here is less than 45 degrees, so it's going to maintain them. So now that we have that, you can see, well, actually that is not, there is no geometry on here, which is more than 45 degrees, mainly because it's been smoothed. It's actually quite smooth. We could increase this and the higher we increase it, the fewer polygroups we're gonna find because anything, all of these turns of form, um, none of them are over 72, degree, or 72 degrees in this instance. So as we bring this down, say 55, you'll see it will start picking up groups and saying, yeah, these are all within a tolerance. Um, and the lower we go, the more groups that we'll get. Sorry, let me just go lower. And you can see this hasn't been affected yet. So we can go lower again, uh, down to here, and now we start getting this affected here. So while this is working, it's still a little bit sloppy, let's say. If instead we go back to our original 45 degrees and we hit group by normals, that's working fine for this one, but I'm gonna turn on the algorithm now, the alternate algorithm, and then hit group by normals. And now you'll see that the blocky one isn't really, isn't really working anymore. Uh, and neither is this one. Both of them seem to be getting the same result. And if we go higher than this, nothing's going to change. However, as we go lower, you can see that this smoother version is now starting to get blocks of geometry. This one with the real, with the normal algorithm would have done this, but with the refined algorithm is going to do this. So it's not going to affect the blocky ones. It is going to affect more rounded shapes in general. So as we continue to go down further and further, you'll see that this one will get more and more geometry. So that's how we're going to actually use this. In general, you're going to use this uh, open circle for smooth surfaces, and you're going to use the closed circle for uh, blockier surfaces. So here we have this hood, and you can see in general, this is quite a smooth organic looking surface. So I know immediately that I'm going to turn this on when I'm working on this. So if I hit the group by normals now, taking the default of 45 degrees, I just hit the button. This is going, it's going to give me this result here. And this isn't too bad. We've now already kind of separated the outside from the inside. Um, and it's given us different groups along the edges in here. So if you hold down control and shift, you get your select tool, at which point you can click on one and you can isolate that. And you can see what we have here. I can control, shift and drag to see the inverse. And while that's working, we have some extra edges around the, the, the connecting pieces, as it were. So while this is okay, it's actually giving us a turn of form here that I, I would rather have as two separate polygroups. I want these interior edges to be treated the same way it, it did these. I'd like them all to be uh, separate polygroups that I can actually enter or uh, use. So if I reduce this number, let's go down to say 35 degrees and hit group by normals again. And you can see now it's actually given the interior piece here, a separate polygroup to, to this piece over here. And we have the option to separate these out nice and easily. However, if I was to go down even further to say 30 degrees, you can see it's given us a better surface on the top but it's also started splitting the inside into multiple surfaces as well. So this is, and the same for the outside. 
you could always join them afterwards and um, that's not a problem but it's just to be aware that if you are if this number goes down too low you may give yourself problems so you kind of have to find a happy middle ground for me let's say 35 gave me a decent result here one that would allow me to hold down control and shift and select this surface here click on it again to hide it and then click on this surface and that will give me all of the other pieces as a separate a separate elements we can hit Control w to create one polygroup for all of these and then Control shift to bring everything back and now we have an interior and an exterior if this wasn't the case if you don't want to use polygroup by normals you do have another option so if i'm just going to press Control w to reduce all uh, all of this to one polygroup and the other option we have is the select tool so when you hold down Control and shift you can choose the select lasso tool and if i click on that what that does is it allows you to hold down control and shift and click on an edge and that edge if it's in a ring it will basically just select that and then hide that entire ring so i'll hold control shift tap to bring everything back but control shift tapping on any edge will look at that loop and hide all of those polygons so if your model was originally generated using for example uh, subdivision subdivided meshes well then more than likely you're going to have loops that make sense that will actually run all the way around the model so for example i can come in here now and say well actually i'm going to hide this loop and anywhere where i have a hole in the model i'm going to hide these loops this one here we need to do the bottom as well and this is a worst case scenario you know we can hold on this edge so we've hidden that one holding down control and shift we do the other ear and the top so control and shift oh control and shift hide that and we go to the top here let's get in a little bit closer control and shift and we hide that so these are now separate those loops are hidden and because they're hidden it means that these objects are no longer touching each other the, the front and the back so now if we go to polygroups all we have to do is hit auto groups and that will look at those two islands that are no longer separate or no longer touching and basically say okay well, i'm going to give them two separate polygroups so at this stage i could hit Control shift to bring back the one that we had hidden um, and we have that as a, as a dividing one if we want if you wanted to add that to one of the others you would literally just hold hold down Control and shift on one on a point rather than the edge because you don't want us to just hide the loop while we have this open um, Control shift it again and then Control shift Select one of these green vertices uh, and the other one down here. And like Pokemon, make sure you get them all. Um, if there are any others, uh, and then we can control shift drag to invert that selection. And you see we now have the two polygroups, control W will make them one. Control shift tap will bring everything back. So we could separate them out like that. There are other instances where you won't have that option um, so for example let's say on this guy's uh, pads here let's say i had no polygroups so i'm going to hit Control w just to make them all one polygroup uh, and let's say i wanted to to actually find the normals for this so if i hit group by normals on this you can see i'm using the algorithm the open circle and it's kind of giving me some good results on some and not so good on others um, where it actually bends around the corner or whatever um, and we can try playing around with I mean if, if we turn this off to have a look you'll see sometimes that will give you a good result if it's not too organic and um, so that might actually be good enough for you um, and we can also use our trick of holding down control and shift and selecting these edges if possible and sometimes when you hold down control and shift on these edges if they spiral if the loops actually spiral and um, this isn't going to work for you so um, this looks like it may actually be a spiral loop which is going to go around and around now you could do this um, and find faces that are going to allow you to have at least one clean face here and then because they're separate do your auto groups this one will be separate to the others Control shift will bring everything back and then you can isolate a single group using Control shift and make hold Control w to make all of these a single group and yeah you can do that you can't do that the other option is if it is giving you bad results uh, and i'm just going to auto groups this with everything open 
So we see them all as one, just so I can isolate a single object. I'm just gonna take one of these, let's say this one. So if I don't have, and this looks like it is a spiral, it's not working very well. I don't have a loop that's just gonna go around this cleanly. So the other option is just to create one. So you can do that by holding down Control and Shift and choosing the slice curve. So with Control Shift held down, as you pull out this curve here, if you Alt or tap the Alt key once, you'll get a curve here. Keep on tapping it as often as you need to. And you can even let go of shift as you're in the middle of this. But if, you're, if your curve isn't perfect, press the space bar and that'll allow you to kind of position it a little bit better. And once you, you're happy with it, you'll see that this will create a slice through your object for you. Now, if you didn't get your alignment right, just undo this, find a better degree of alignment. <laughs> And create a, hit Alt as many times as you need uh, until you get that nice clean look there. So once you have, now you have a polygroup. If you want to Z remesh this for whatever reason, if you, if, you, if you don't like these triangles and you don't want to go cleaning them up, you can go down to Z remesher, say, give me the same amount of polygroups, turn on keep groups, don't smooth them. Um, and then just hit zero mesh and that should give you a polygon count roughly where what you had now It'll bring everything else back because I had the others hidden But you'll see that that will have cleaned up those triangles and given you a front surface that you could work on So yeah, I hope this helps you out in whatever project you're working on. Don't forget to hit like if it did. All right. Bye